All right, we're here. Tired cast. Yeah, the best cast. You guys from, can do stuff now. We got people in the back playing Street Fighter. From my humble apartment. In with, humble Jersey. In humble town. With humble pizza boxes. I'm tired. I don't know if I'm half drunk or if I'm tired, so. Well, you only had one beer, so if you're half drunk. Steve, I I'm can get pretty drunk off of one beer. Son, I am disappointed. Money oh, they're money matching. Whoa. Slayer is probably gonna. Wait, no, Slayer's probably gonna win. Anyway. What'd you say, Alex? I said you're probably going to win. Oh. Podcast. Anyway, this should be our first one on YouTube. Um, fortunately, I found out the hard way, sort of hard way, that um, SoundCloud. <laughs> the medium way. The medium way. That SoundCloud has limited space for free accounts. So we're just gonna go back to YouTube. Mm hmm. Um, not as much to go over this week. Definitely a lot shorter. You can probably see that just in the runtime of the video. Mm -hmm. We're not going two hours. I don't think we'll ever yeah. go two hours. I don't we even might... know why we went two hours. We might go two hours again, but if we do, it'll. it'll you can probably count no, your fingers well, like, the yeah. amount of times we'll ever go on yeah, two like, hours. The next time we go two hours, it'll be like post Evo or something, and we'll talk about every single match. Oh, did you see the Lupe Fiasco meet Sonic Fox at Super Street Fighter Turbo, Turbo Butt Jam Tekken 2? Anyway. Alright, we got a list this time of random BS to go over. Hey, mm. it's not random, it's carefully thought out. Oh, wait, no, I have, to, I have to watch myself now because I'm a mod. And Hiles is being disgusting in the background. Well, that's just Hiles. Um, so if you're a mod, so you have to watch yourself, can I just uh, do whatever? I'm already half drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not the best reason. Okay, so, first of all... Ooh. The concept of ducking. Oh yeah, so we were um, wrong last week. Again, we knew we would probably be wrong on something. Well, to be fair, I felt I was right, but you corrected me to be wrong. I don't even remember. Um, yeah, so there is raw ducking, and the, most characters do have it. It's called, for the most part, low stance. Yeah. And it's... I think it's pretty dual much phase, the same. Is it dual phase exclusive? Yeah, pretty much the same for every character. I think except for Gengar, who can still move in his because he's weird. Got to crawl. It's way faster than a crawl. I mean, but it's effectively a crawl. It's just yeah. a fast crawl. Yeah. So there's ducking, and then the like the concept of um, crush attacks in general, which. For those unfamiliar with uh, Tekken and Soul Calibur terminology, a crush is just is basically just a dodge. We're not talking about Street Fighter Five ca crush, crush counters, counters. Or, or guard crushes or anything like that. Basically, when you if you were to say something low crushes, that really just means it jumps over lows, or if it high crushes, it'll duck under highs. Such as we got um. Yeah, we got that nice uh, punishment video. Gardevoir's... <gasps> Alright, I don't remember the input. Um, but her anti-air um, arrows in dual phase. Apparently it high crushes. Because while she is standing there, her upper body's invincible. Okay. Is that is it like actual upper body invincibility? Or is it like anti-air invincibility? It's full... Because um, a lot of char characters like... Blaziken's, like, one of Blaziken's forward kicks, or, like, Machamp's counter, um, Are Laureate. High. Yeah. They're highs. They are, those highs, know. don't, don't turn off the computer, please. Oh. Those buttons are super sensitive. Yeah. Um, yeah, those, um, will lose to okay. Gardevoir doing her, it's the arrow, it shoots out three arrows. Yeah, it's 8Y, right? I think it's 8Y. Uh, yeah. Um, it shoots out three arrows. And it, um, yeah, it's supposed to be the anti-air, and apparently has upper body invincibility. Well, that's probably just how this game handles anti, the concept of anti-airing. Well, I mean, also, the projectiles just hit everywhere you can see yeah, exactly. be in the air. Mm -hmm. It seems like most characters, like 8Y, are basically the same. Like, that's a character's go-to anti-air. 
So most of them will probably end up having some kind of anti uh, upper body invincibility. So yeah, and there's so everybody has stances. Apparently, some characters' stances are also taunts. Yeah, like, it seems like are peekas. From what, <laughs> yeah, from what I was reading uh, from Cat Fight's little notes was that uh, every character has a I'll call it a semi unique high stance. It's sort of broken down by character archetype. Like, um, the four power characters. Three of them, Machamp, Garchomp, and Charizard, all have really, really similar high stances. Um, they all have some form of armor, which for each of them seems to block a different thing. Like, Machamp blocks light attacks. Garchomp will block like heavy attacks yeah i think including light attacks maybe because that makes sense i'm not totally sure and then charizard blocks grabs i just know we've been starting to get into that which is really neat uh that we're starting to actually get decent info before the game like mm -hmm. it's only a week but still yeah thanks to like specific individuals getting review copies yeah like um i think shofu has said some good stuff yeah shofu uh, i know nintendo did some interesting stuff when he got his stream chance going over combos Mm -hmm. uh, Nintendo's a cool guy. Does I don't want to say Shofu is not a cool guy. I just haven't met Shofu. Yeah, so it would be it would be unfair to just assume he's a cool guy. He has to prove his cool guyness. Now you know who's a cool guy. Cool guy. Cool who's guy. A cool guy. Cool guy's a cool guy. But Mr. Funk is not a cool guy. No. Cool guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. So yeah, they they like that's how those three the power those three power characters high stances work, but then Chandelure's is really similar to Gengar's I think like it's a float up in the air, so it'll go under low attacks. It's basically just a sustained jump and he can move around in it. Um, it seems that I read um, like Pikachu and Lucario will just charge uh, Synergy Gauge I think. Really, that's actually yeah. kind of cool. They charge something. I mean, you can just punch them. I'm going to just be honest. I have not looked into any of this. Um, yeah, last week, out of nowhere, school got really intense. So oh, I haven't yeah. been able... If anybody here is from the Soul Calibur group, um, Soul Calibur community, I have not been able to work on any of the match videos at all because school just got intense. But now we got spring break. The hey. final round, so I'll have... I'll, I should... Do that stuff. Should have it done by tomorrow, but um, no promises. Yeah, so anyway... Coming back from our second distraction in this particular topic, um, yeah, those two characters, Pikachu and Lucario, seem to generate Synergy Gauge or something, and then a lot of other characters have like big question marks on what their high stances do, like pretty much every other character, like Sceptile, Weavile, um, the Mewtwo's, pretty much like Blaziken. Mm. Gardevoir, no idea but this what gets, their high stances really do. With this type of data, gets into, um, what's it, um, Galavance, or Galley, whatever you want to call him. Um, the head of Pokemon Arena has set up a wiki that we are now attempting to populate with information because we're finally getting information in. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully... Getting a lot more hard data at this point. That'll be a good place because... I remember talking to him. The forums are not a very good... A for, no, the forum structure is not a very good place to parse through data. I yeah. actually really... One thing I really did not like that um, happened with Soul Calibur. They right. never made a combo... Like a dedicated um, combo section in their data area. If you wanted combos, you had to go to the forums. Yeah, and either like comb through old pages or ask somebody. Yeah. Or something stupid like that. And like sometimes it was up to date and sometimes it wasn't. Whereas if you have yeah. a wiki, it's right there. When's the last time this was edited? This time. And you can put notes that are easily checkable and yeah. stuff like that. It's all all the information is a lot more direct. Um It's also a lot more easily uh edited since multiple people can work on a single page as opposed to yeah, oh only the hey guy group. that only might that not be specific thread creator that may not even have an active account anymore yeah so anyway yeah. Yeah, the wiki looks good um 
But that gets into speaking of data. So apparently, yeah. all right. Someone said this, and I'm tend to I tend to believe them because nobody has come out and said we're wrong. Mm -hmm. And um. Yeah, I've, I've seen this like like sort of proven in a lot of cases. I didn't actually look to prove it myself. I just kind of assumed it was right. But apparently, the review copies of the game are missing 700 megabytes of data. To put that yeah. into perspective, uh, most games um have. I want to say two to three gigabytes of data. Anywhere from like two or three to upwards of like six gigs. That's like any... really that's stuff. Yeah, like that's like a Xenoblade. Super, yeah, um, that's Xenoblade. like a stupid huge game with just a lot of stuff. So seven hundred megabytes can have a lot of stuff. For example, the obvious thing that everybody is immediately thinking of, the last four characters. Po the last four possible characters. Turn your freaking phone off! Oh, my girlfriend's probably telling everybody to shut up. Oh. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> um. Yeah, so there's still... We're holding out for those last four characters, both because we want four more characters, and because we don't want an ugly character select screen. Yeah. Um, the only other thing it could be is like just stuff that's like Bigger not stuff done it. yet, I guess. Specific story mode information, anything that's not done with online, but the real obvious thing, like the only thing I would say that's important that it could be would be the last four characters. I and can't imagine 700 being anything else yeah especially because like putting out the review copies with 16 characters and nintendo saying here's the final roster guys even though nintendo never actually said it yeah, they didn't everybody that got the review copies and everybody that knew about them was just like oh the review copies the game's done this is what these are the characters in the game this is the final roster and Nintendo probably just went along with it because that really seems like Nintendo's MO. And also, if Nintendo said anything like that, we probably would have heard of it somewhere. And if Nintendo did try to say to any of these reviewers, hey, don't talk about these four things, it would have been leaked. Yeah. There's so many things that Nintendo told us not, uh, not told us, told reviewers not to do. And they did it anyway. Yeah. Like, cheer skills. Um, and, what is it, the final boss. Yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah, speaking of Nintendo, we got these perfect transitions, man. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like we planned this. You planned this? Um... Is, yeah, so the uh, the Pokemon Ch the Pokemon Championship <laughs> series, which I don't actually know a lot about personally. All right, not a, a lot of us really don't. All right, I'm the I probably know more than you do, so I'm just gonna go off. All right, so there's I don't know. There's a lot of tournaments. This is an um international thing. I know there are f no three. I'm sorry. There are three majors. Well, I'm sorry, majors is a bad word because they use majors. There are three tournaments, three qualifying tournaments for the championship championship series in the United States. There's CEO down in Orlando, Florida. There's Pokemon Nationals in, I think it's Columbus, Ohio. I know it's Ohio. And then there's Evo in Las Vegas, more specifically Paradise City, Nevada. And, um, yeah, you go there, and you have your tournaments, double LM. We don't have any, um, information on the specific rules yet. Like, is this character banned? Is it best two out of three? All that stuff. Right now, we're expecting no bans. Standard character lock, two out of three, 80 seconds. All that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there's the three qualifying tournaments. And there's also two separate leagues. There's the, what they call it, the senior, no, yes, yes, the senior league, which is the kids league, and the master league, which is the adults league, to put it simply. I think it's, if you're born before 2001, you're in the senior league, and if you're born 2001 or later, 
you're in the Master League. So yeah, they split up in two different leagues. It's going to be interesting. Although some um, tournaments just don't have separate leagues. And they're just like, oh, I'll just put them both together. Like, I'm pretty sure CEO does not have separate leagues. Although I think Apex... I'm sorry. Evo does. Apex is not an official part of this tournament series, by the way. But they will have Pokken. Anyway. Um, then you can win money there. And, like, what is it? First and second place, I think, gets an automatic qualification. An automatic invitation to uh, Worlds. Which is the big world championship in... I want to say San Francisco. I know it's in California. But yeah, Worlds. Um, first and second place get the automatic. Yo! Watch it, man! <laughs> and so... Anybody who's not first and second gets points. Kind of like Capcom Cup. Okay. I don't know how the points work. All I know is you get them. I don't know how many you need but to do something. You get points and they count for something. Oh, and apparently, actually, there is qualifying at Worlds <clears throat> before... Everybody who already did qualify um, plays their world tournament thing. Okay. So there's got to be technically two Pokemon tournaments at Worlds? No, four if you include the two separate leagues. It's insane. How many you play? So that'll be yeah, fun. Um, oh, and there's money. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah what money. is it? 5,000 for first place at a normal tourney, 6,000 for first place at in the world championship. And then it just goes down from there. All the way down to 8th place gets um, decent payout. Like 500 bucks, I think. That's not bad. Um, and I'm, I think, don't quote me, I think they pay for your travel if uh, you are automatically invited for, by getting first or second place. Not bad. Your travel to Worlds, I mean. Right. And so, yeah. But yeah, with tournaments. Um, first tournament I want to shout out to is the online friendly uh as they've been calling it the Pokin arena sorry um the Pokin arena friendly everybody's gonna be having on saturday the day two friendly as i'm calling it mm -hmm. i won't be there zarek won't be there just gonna yeah. mention that but mm -hmm. we're not gonna be there because we're gonna be in, in georgia in atlanta georgia final round yeah where something is going to happen. We still don't know exactly what's going to happen. We're going to have something happen, and it's going to be good. Yeah. We're going to be running something. We're going to have Poke in there. Hopefully it'll be streamed. I know Bifu Techie has offered to stream it. Um, He's the guy who's currently running Apex. And he's done a lot of streams for fighting games in the past. He still does them. Apparently he does streams for other things too, like concerts. Oh, that's... Cool, I didn't know that. And when I say Bifu Techie, I'm talking about the main guy, Andre. Because Bifu Techie is technically also his organization that employs, I think, six people. Mm -hmm. It's six or four. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a... We don't know what's going on in final round right now. We yeah. just know we're going to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... It's one of those things that no one's going to know what it is until it's happening. I was thinking that Ron Paul gif. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Oh, of course. Um, it's a pretty good gif. It is. Lupe. I wrote down Lupe in the notes because I wanted to talk about Lupe. Why would we talk about Lupe? Because Lupe is awesome right now. <laughs> To be fair, that was a great event, but it has nothing to do with Pokken. Oh, but he's like talking to everybody. He even t ended up talking to what was it? He was asking Hungrybox, I think it was, about DI. Maybe it was Mango. And like someone was explaining DI to him. And they had this Twitter conversation that it just explained DI. It was great. <laughs> oh, online. Online. That's my next note. Yeah. Uh online functionality oh yeah in. I just want to say that we still a bit of a question mark well we've been getting word in because the online functionality just um, was enabled for review copies <laughs> oh and the not only was the, the the patch enable online functionality apparently the patch was also a balance patch a pre-release balance patch for <laughs> review copies which that is, is just so weird <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened <laughs> 
I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake? Yeah. I mean, the only confirmed change is what? Mewtwo losing 30 health? Yeah, something like that. But still, that, when I heard about that, I was like, what? Yeah. Pre release. So who knows what other changes there are? But. Maybe there's nothing else. Maybe that was it. Yeah, maybe, you know, just like, you know what? Mewtwo has slightly too much health. We're going to lower it a little bit. Because he's obviously destroying all of the offline review copies playing against their friends. Or something. We know they are. And if he just had a little health, a little less health, that would be much easier to deal with. You can't see the gesture I'm making. He's making stupid gestures. We don't know why they did it. Maybe it was something that was planned before and just didn't get into the original version of the review copy and it's yeah, going to sure be like that at release. There's definitely some kind of reason for it, but... It's still silly. Yeah. Um, That actually brings up a point with balance and everything. I do want to say, people can speculate, but actually calling for things to be like researched into being banned at this oh, point yeah, this is argument. way too okay. early. Yeah, the whole restroom debate. Yeah, restroom Cresselia. It's like... Restroom looks really cool. Um, it does a lot of damage if you don't block, and does a lot of guard damage. Mm -hmm. But I feel like once um, higher level meta evolves and good players get their hands on it, just the basic supports, their utility can still be really good and yeah, just, just as good. Yeah, just the fact that the basic supports charge so much faster, and free. you can actually use them like more than once. In a single round, potentially. And also, you've got Fennekin, who is a safe um, reversal. reversal. I want invincibility with huge pushback mm -hmm. and pretty good damage. It's just, oh, my character has a weakness to pressure. Oh, I'll just use this reversal. Fennekin is <laughs> so good. I don't know if people understand how great... Fennekin really is. Yeah. Like, we're probably going to see so much Fennekin. Yeah, like, typically, if you can't decide... That's the thing. Like, if you can't decide on what support your character needs, or if, you're a or if you play a character that's, like, pretty much good enough that you don't need a support to patch up a certain area, just go with Fennekin. Yeah, Fennekin's definitely going to be one of those. And what... Does Fennekin get paired with Emolga? Yeah. Yeah, Emolga's also really good. Mm -hmm. Lowering your opponent's movement options, because Emolga gives you movement um, debuff on hit. Yeah, like as the you know as the game goes on, it's gonna become more and more apparent how important movement is in a game like this. Movement is always important in every game, but in a game like this, I feel it's going to be even more important just all the utility from all the supports i can see working so well it's just really obvious as to what reshiram and Cresselia, or is they what do they call it uh reshelia do they yeah i've heard that who calls it that bunch of people why because it's reshiram and Cresselia. reshelia oh i see i th i thought it, like reshelia was like some sort of weird translation but anyway, those two are really obvious as, what they're, at the, as to what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They are really slow charging, big, powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Restroom, you might not even get a chance to use it in the first round. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, unless, unless, you, unless you're playing Weavile and you have the weirdest strategy of just hanging back and doing Signal Slash <laughs> on your air platform. Actually... There is something I can see being interesting. Oh, it wouldn't be first round, though. Um, if you go with the support cheer skill, that maxes out your support no matter what. Yeah. But you take a, you don't take any um, synergy burst uh, boost. <laughs> synergy burst boost. Yeah. Blech. But yeah, I can see that paired with slow ch um, supports could be something very interesting and something to look out for. Not to look out for in terms of we should ban this. Look out for in terms of this is going to be strong. Yeah, be aware of this strategy. Um, but then we also have to wonder how much is not having synergy boost 
yeah. from cheer. How which, much is that going to really affect things? Because that could getting like getting an extra, like getting a big boost to your synergy gauge is going to be really important, just because of how in burst mode you're you have armor versus light attacks. That's going to be extremely important. So many characters I see like they all of their best stuff starts from light attacks. A lot of them, not all of them. I'm just thinking. I'm thinking Gardevoir because it's the one I'm going to main, so I've been looking into her a lot. A lot of her moves are just you're going to be getting hit. You're going to be getting hit like once or twice from these big setups. But part of it is the threat of the light attacks or what keeps you in the setups. I remember watching this um, video recently on Nico. Yeah, if your opponent has armor, they can just walk forward. Yeah, someone was um. I was watching a Nico match where it was Gardevoir versus Machamp. And Machamp threw on, um, what's the Jirachi opposite? Uh, Whimsicott? Whims Whims Whimsicott, yeah. Whimsicott. Um, threw on Whimsicott's substitutes. And all of a sudden, Gardevoir couldn't use her arrows anymore because Machamp just didn't care and would just walk forward. That type of stuff can be really powerful. Mm -hmm. Which also, oh, Yivitaal. Just... No synergy gauge for you. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. See, I would think that's scarier than um, both Rochelia and... Um, yeah, like, that is, a or just much, that is a much bigger opportunity cost. Like, just locking out your opponent's synergy gauge is such a specifically powerful option. But what I'm, what I'm wondering is... Are we ever going to actually see Yvetal hit in um, a high-level match? I'm wondering if Yvetal's threat of no meter is going to be such a huge threat that it'll pretty much just force your opponent to deal with Yvetal and just then deal with the just the concept of Yvetal possibly showing up. And then it's gonna just, keep them safe. Yeah, and keep them um, over there. I remember. I think most people know I'm a Brony at this point. You can say stuff. This is. Uh, no, I'm wondering if a snowball is. Uh, what, sans, what's the setting at? It's the one that it points forward. Okay. But um, this is uh, Sans over here hanging with us. He was playing Street Fighter earlier. Okay. Anyway, He's a bit smelly. I am very smelly right now. It's really bad. <laughs> the, oh, so Veltal is a support in this game? Yeah. But what I was getting at, real quick. He's actually one of the best supports. My th uh, thing is, all right. I played the Pody card game for a while. Yeah. And there was this card that um would just sit there and have this like super telegraphed big effect, and you your opponent would just want to avoid it. And I remember looking at this card and just thinking, this card's terrible. I did. My opponent can just see what's going on. They're just going to avoid it. I'm never going to get the hit. And then I realized, wait, my opponent's going to avoid this every single time. This card is amazing. Mm -hmm. Just punish the avoidance. It's basically one big trap. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Yvitaal, um, Son's getting into this. Yvitaal is a support that if you get hit, your super meter gets locked out. Which is very like when you, important. Wait, when you hit somebody else, their super meter gets locked out? Like, yes. when someone gets hit okay. by Yvitaal, their super meter gets locked out. Okay. Alright, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. and so they lose not... access to burst mode. Alright, alright. Yeah, meter in this game is more like X-Factor than it is like... I would like meter. it more to uh, Blaze Blue's Overdrives. Yeah. Which, in turn, has been likened to X-Factor. Now, would you say Which that uh, Yvotol would be like a successful, uh, successful support on all types of characters? It is, yeah, more of a like a general kind of use. I feel Yvotol being more of a counter, like a char if some of a person or a character really likes being in burst mode, mm -hmm. I can then see Yvotol being mm -hmm. a really good counter to that. Mm -hmm. See, now, I was thinking something like this, where you have, like, you have your, like, aggressive characters, your Blazer Kittens, your Machamps, but then you have your characters, like, your Gardevoirs, who are just gonna sit back and throw Frisbees, in which case, maybe a Veltol won't exactly help you in the same way. You might want a different support. That's still... Because yeah, a Veltol I mean, is a very aggressive support as well. We don't know, we're not actually. Sure. 
we're we not sure exactly it how it hits. Like it's basically like a big bomb area of effect. As far as we know. Yeah. I haven't seen a video. We don't know if you can combo into it, if it's like super yeah, I thought fast. You probably can't I thought combo you said, into uh, it. was the one that locked out the super video. Yeah, we just know what it does on hit. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. We don't know how fast the hit is. We don't know how much damage it does. We don't know um, how it's big the hitbox is. It's like where you have to... It just says it's a big area of effect attack. All right. It's called yeah. Oblivion Wing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I mean... Now, I'd imagine, like, if this lasted a long time, it could be used to, like, Which, some people out. I could actually see it being useful for, I feel like I'm, like, plugging myself, but a character like Garchomp, who, <laughs> well, for one thing is, in Synergy Burst, in Synergy Mode, all characters gain light armor, so they can just power through light attacks from their opponent. And the thing about Garchomp is, all of his non-light attacks are very, like, very committal, they're, like, one action type of attacks like his big body drills do multi-hit but they he can only do one of them he can't like throw one out change a decision like cancel it into something else that he can the way he can with his light attacks so if the opponent is in synergy burst he can't really use his light attacks so he can't really attack in the same way he can't pressure pretty much at all so Garchomp could. Now, actually, I think there's a very interesting dynamic here, which we don't, we may not may uh, know too much about them yet, but I think uh, with Garchomp's stances, I think uh, Evolto would be a great like option coverage situation, in which you could pressure your opponent into uh, different situations off of those, maybe. Well, we don't know. See, some of the um, uh, supports force you to stand there yeah, while they're doing their they're thing. They're not like Marvel assists. Yeah. But some are your character does go through like a specific call animation. That usually lasts a good amount of time. But we also don't know. Some characters might, um... I mean, some supports, you call it, but then you can do whatever you want, like a Molga. Yeah. yeah, like you have a very short call animation. And there's others where, like Fennekin, the entire time, you are just locked down and not able to do anything while Fennekin does her thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious. Do we know how stances work with um, supports? Whether you, have, whether you uh, immediately exit the stance on call, if they're unavailable, or if you... Can oh, if you can cancel a stance into an assist call, you'll exit the stance. Okay. But I don't think you can. I've never seen it happen. It might, it might be an interesting point to where if you're in... Like, let's say Garchomp's dig stance, right? Mm -hmm. Where if you're underground and then you call an assist, and if it doesn't cancel, then you really have options out of, out of it. That kind of thing. I don't know. There's still uh, definitely a lot to be learned. Oh yeah. So that's that's like the big thing about Pokemon right now. There's oh, we need to know more things. Please, because the game's gonna give us things. Yeah. Speaking is... of knowing more things, that day before tourney that we're not gonna be able to watch until late at night because we'll be on the road. Yeah. Uh, Unless like you stream it. There's um. What's and it? you just like narrate what's happening to me while I drive. So, like, Justin Wong is uh, one of the coaches. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So have you talked about? Was I think it was was it Sonic Fox who got immediately challenged to this game? No, that not that in this game. game. That, that was, was uh, game. the uh, oh, that was okay. them's fighting herds. Oh okay. Somebody should still challenge Sonic Fox mm -hmm. to this game. Well, Sonic Fox is interested in this game as far as Sonic Fox is interested in everything. That's true. He likes it. I mean, not that that's a bad thing, yeah. but he is interested in everything. <laughs> not to be like that, but I like for whatever it is with community, I do like Sonic Fox as a player a lot, yeah. and I think that when he picks up a game, he definitely pushes it. So if he picks up Pokemon, I'm really excited to see what he does with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to see a lot of. Uh... High level players from other games get into Pokemon. Do we know like Justin Wong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aside from Justin, Justin Wong, Wong gets to play Wolverine again. Oh boy. <laughs> oh yeah, Tiny Ice Wolverine. <laughs> it was like I feel like I feel like Justin Wong like picked up the game and like oh what characters? Well, okay. <laughs> oh we will. Okay, I can play this game. <laughs> Cyclops? No. Wolverine. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay cool. I can play this game. <laughs> now, do we know about any kind of high-level support uh, besides those two players? Um, well, there was another player that's going to be the coach for the... Um, to tell you the truth, I kind of looked at the thing, um, the announcement for the tournament. It's like, oh, some known players. I know some of these guys. I don't really care all about this announcement. I'll just watch it when it comes out. That was my thoughts on it. Yeah. Like, especially, like, the, the splash, like, the graphic that I saw, 
in the announcement. It just like it kind of had like all eight coaches, I think. There's only two coaches. Oh, there's two coaches and there's eight players. Each oh, coach okay. has um four players. Oh, okay. Well, whatever it was. As it far had, as I like, know. I might be totally wrong because I, I didn't watch I the video. I thought it was the coaches because one of these, like it had eight faces in like small little segments, like really grouped together. And I couldn't tell who was who except for Justin Wong was way at the left. Yeah, I know. Okay, I don't know. So I was like, oh, it's Justin Wong. I don't know anybody else. <laughs> so what I'm oh, hearing here is that we can have a team entirely composed of tiny ice boys. Sounds good to me. That five wee wilds, four wee wilds, guys, sounds good. Um, that's, you know that's that, what I would run. Some of the people coming in um, that part of the pre-release are Smash players. Yeah, I could see that. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Because this is not Except, a platform fighter. Yeah, I'm not sure actually how much like Smash fundamentals are going to directly well, the cross thing is, over. If you're a I mean, good Smash player... Yeah, you, if you're smart looking, enough to be able to learn Smash, yeah, think, you'll be looking for the right things. I think you'll be able to adapt pretty well. Mm-hmm. Someone who's gonna who's already into traditional fighters will have a leg up on you. Yeah, but you won't be outclassed. I almost feel like the traditional fighting game players will have a leg up in dual phase, whereas the Smash players might have a leg up in field phase. I can see that. The Naruto Revolution players are gonna kill everyone. Oh that? man, <laughs> secret tech. <laughs> They actually they play Greninja. They put on a, they put on an orange costume. <laughs> It'll be perfect. But um, actually, I, I it will. There is a small point to be made in that. Um, I think so. There are certain Smash players who play for the franchise. They play for their characters. So they're yeah. like, oh, here's a game where I can play as like one of my favorite Pokemon. And yeah. That's that's the only reason I'm interested in the game. I can, one of my I can play Pokemon. Pokemon. And, you know, like, I don't, I just like a lot of Gen Five right now. Yeah, Gen Five was cool. And I just. I would love a lot of Gen 5. My, you already have a chandelier. Come on. The yeah. ones that I like in Gen 5, though, I don't feel like they lend themselves to be fighting game characters. Like Rionicles and Volcarona. Yeah. I, I don't know. Rionicles would be cool. But he'd be easy to get wrong, I feel. Also, it would be really cool. Fight Moose. Cobalion. Or wait, no, Terrakion. Would be amazing. The Fight Moose. But guys. He would just have a grab. Where he just like moves forward, he turns green, and a grab happens, and then he moves forward again, and close combat animation plays, and you take damage and fly away. But guys, why not Thunder? Because, because the genies I don't are like stupid. the genies. <laughs> but guys, why not Thunder? Actually, I would really. I'd be as fine with very informed Thunderous. See, I would actually because he's see, more um, interesting. Some genie assists. <laughs> Happening. I think that might be it. Yeah, I don't cool. think we're gonna get any more assists. The yeah, assist screen is yeah, the as opposed yeah. to the character select screen has four holes. The assist screen is full. Yeah, I mean they could always just add more pages down. Yeah, they could. For assist screen. But probably, I mean assists are a lot simpler to work yeah. on. Plus, it's also so what you were saying about um, Gen Five doesn't really lend itself. I think it's sort of. No, but I'm not like. I'm he's not saying Gen Violent. He's saying my character that I picked oh, out specifically. Okay. Yeah, Reuniclus okay. and uh, Volcarona can work, but like. Volcarona has a, a problem I feel a lot of Pokemon have when you consider them for a game like this. They, they can't like emote very yeah. dynamically. Like, they can't create a lot of interesting gestures and convey a lot of personality through the Pokemon. Like. I initially thought that about a, that about Chandelure, but the way he like Chandelure kind of stretches its arms around and it has eyes that can you know open and close and it makes all sorts of cute noises like they made that work, but I can't see them doing that for something like Volcarona. I just want to say real quick, I love how pretty much every single Pokemon discussion right now before the games comes out just always devolves into what new characters could we see? Yeah, this is true. <laughs> well. That's just the way fighting games are. Well, that's just, that's also because of the four extra slots that look like they're empty. Mm. Yeah, it just it's so heavily suggests that there's def- characters, guys. Hopefully, no deals. Yo, <laughs> Beedrill looks pretty cool. Beedrill would be great. I would love to play a Phillips head screwdriver. Beat. <laughs> <laughs> Why not Mega Pinsir though? Um, because, because Beedrill's better. Well, Mega Pinsir has a different kind of problem. What? Well. Normal pincer is sitting on the ground. He has dumpy body syndrome. He has tiny <laughs> legs. And as far as I know, mega normal pincer can't fly. 
But no, listen to this, right? Normal pincer doesn't have wings, no, right? Here's, here's correct the, me if I'm wrong. You're correct. Okay. But mega okay. pincer flies around and would circumvent that problem. Right. But that's the thing. You can't, like, that dramatically change... I mean, I guess you could. Like, nothing's really stopping you from changing a character that dramatically from their normal to do burst mode. Like, so in normal mode, they're, like, kind of slow. They're, like, they're super slow. They don't do anything, but if they touch you, they're dead. But then in burst mode, the only thing they get is, hey, now I can move. What's it? Well, they did, um, they did that with Gengar. Yeah, but Gengar still moves at the same speed. He effectively... I thought he was a lot faster the... when he... I mean, effectively. He moves a little faster, but... He looks... It's not like... He, he could still move pretty fast in normal mode. It's not like Machamp speed to yeah, Wolverine speed. speed boys. I'm, I'm sorry, you got me calling him Wolverine now. <laughs> it's not like uh, Machamp speed to uh, Weavile speed. It's not no. like that. Look, here's the thing. We, we've already created an association, so we yeah. understand that Wolverine... Yeah. So please, call him Wolverine. It makes it much more fun. But, <laughs> but it's still, Wolverine, Arpika. It's still like Mega Gengar versus regular Gengar. Normal Gengar can still do the, all the same things that Mega Gengar does, more or less. Except Except beams. For beams. Yeah! beams. That was. Look at that. Look at that on the audio readout. <laughs> wow, what a spike. Jesus. But um, my ears are bleeding. Looking at that. But you know, normal pincer goes to Mega Pincer, and now he can fly. It's like. I mean, I guess you could have a character like that that, like, is so focused on their synergy mode versus their normal mode. Like, that's their entire game plan. Just get synergy mode and win. Which I think is a dumb character design. I mean, that's, that's, that's Pinsu, just though. me. He's like, get swords, dance, and win. <laughs> <laughs> that's, come on, that's the whole game. <laughs> that's a lot of characters, to be honest. Well, that's just no, that's sweepers. Um, that, we're, we're staying true to design. Like, what's wrong? Fair enough. Well, before <laughs> this goes out of, anywhere out of hand, I do think we should call it here because yeah, it's, we're we, coming we could, up on an hour. I mean, we could talk about theoretical character inclusions for a while. Yeah, we're coming up on an hour. Maybe that'll we, be the next podcast. We but wanted I, this to be a shorter one. Yeah. But I just, I did want to note as one thing, um, as far as like, like, Pinto and such goes, um, anthropomorphic, Oh, sorry, like humanoid rather Pokemon yeah. obviously lend themselves to this game much much better they're just oh, yeah, easier definitely. to animate yeah, you know. also with recycling yeah exactly Namco loves they're recycling. easier to animate for so many reasons but, yeah. but I, I really do think that Pinsir would be at least uh, he'd be a nice addition to this game maybe not like oh yeah I'm not like entirely disagreeing with him I'm just there's like, no real Pokemon the, that the I would say is like a there. bad addition to this game Scrafty Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know Scrafty would have so much personality. He would. He would and have I would more personality it. in his mm -hmm. jab one than you would have in your entire move set. Mm -hmm. Scrafty's a bad Pokemon and a, and a podcast. Mm. And in fact, Two out of ten. ten. Two out I, ten I, I, I give it a podcast out of ten. I give, right. it, give it a game facts out of IGN. That's, <laughs> good. That's a good score. Nah, nah, 7.8 out of ten. <laughs> Too much podcast. All right. <laughs> Awful graphics, terrible sound. It's 7 out of 10. So, let's chat out. What are you looking at, Calvin? He's mad he lost $5. Thanks, I man. love you, Calvin. Anyway, let's um... No, you just love his $5. I do. It's gas money. I'm poor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, just the last thing. Money match beats on Calvin. Um... $10 right now. Steve and I play Monster Hunter and we use the hangout yeah. section of the Discord for our chat. So if people want to hang out with us while we play Monster Hunter, if you happen to look over and see it, um, Monster Hunter Four Ultimate to be um to be specific, the only to be honest, are we shouting out Monster Hunter now? <laughs> We're just saying because we because we do that on the Discord, okay, on the Pokemon Arena Discord in the hangout area where we can just say whatever. We just go there and talk to each other while we play Monster Hunter. Um, the only thing I would say about that is we're probably going to stop doing that once the game comes out and play the game instead. Yeah. I mean, you can still we're, try to talk between matches. Might be hard to yeah. I mean, right now we're just kind of playing Monster Hunter because... Yeah. Also, Monster Hunter Generations, well, Yeah, yeah, yeah. New Game Boys. Yeah. New Game Boys. Not like we're getting a new game in a week. <laughs> new Game Boys! And new character boys on Monday. Oh, Still yeah. poor boys, game. no new Ice game bears. boys. Ice bear boys. Oh god. And I hear we're getting an Undertale too. What? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I, no, I heard that. You're right. No, it's Wait, you seriously? No, you idiot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. You have to commit to the joke. Shut up. <laughs> when you commit to the joke, there is no joke. Isn't that how it goes? No. No, the joke gets better. I'll commit you. All right, bye. <laughs> Sweat. No, in. the mouse is off. <laughs> 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 Sweat. Oh, bad, bad pockets. There we go.